That's heavily. All right, we're starting. It's couple minutes late, but with the snow, people still might be coming in. So welcome to LA2M. Uh, my name is Derek Maravon. I tend to kick off these events. I wasn't here last week. Uh, thanks, Jim, for covering for me. But uh, we're happy to be here. It's a beautiful January day in Michigan, and I appreciate all you brave folks that came through the snow because we have a brilliant speaker today with an exciting topic that's just going to might even fall out of your chair, so hold on, <laughs> hold on tight, and uh, feel free to order your lunch from counters, as you know, there's menus on the table, and uh, we're happy you guys are here. Is there anyone here for your very first LA2M? Very first, okay, welcome guys, welcome. Glad you made it. Uh, we've been doing this now since 2008, it's a while. Um, we've been doing it a while, every week, every week we're here, except for Christmas, and then we take off. Um, July and August, so we're here July and August. So every week we're here with great speakers and we meet nice people, and it's, it's a good benefit to come. So thank you for being here. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you learn something. I usually learn something. And uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, so we are a nonprofit group. Um, we have one employee, Mary Gold, who's wonderful. She does a lot of the heavy lifting because there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Um, Actually, Mary Lou, next next meeting is her last meeting as in this role because she's she's moving on, which is kind of sad. It is sad. So next 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 meeting, we're gonna get really serious and emotional about that goodbye. But we're just I'm just giving you the preview, so you don't want to miss the next meeting. Um, anyways, and we're working on an exciting replacement for Mary Lou, which we will be announced soon as well. So, anyways, um, format for these meetings: uh, speaker talks for approximately 30 minutes. There's often time for Q&A, so save your questions, and we'll come around with the mic, you can ask questions. And then at 12.45, we do introductions. So everyone in this room will get to introduce yourself briefly, which is nice. Um, if you want to tell us what you do, or if you're looking to hire somebody, if you're looking to, I don't know, something, you tell us, yeah, be hired. Then you tell us and you pass the mic and we get all the way around the room. We always finish by one o'clock, and you are on your way back to wherever you do. Um, LA Term also has sponsors, and very important part of what we do. I'm gonna let Jim Musio talk about that. Thanks, Derek. Hi, everybody. It, it is uh, it is very important, uh, the role that our sponsors play in LA2 and helps really keep us going, and uh, we're very fortunate to have sponsors. We have uh, a couple levels of sponsorship, uh, starting with our Platinum sponsorship, which is Briarwood Mall, and uh, that's an annual sponsorship that they, uh, they support us with. Um, in the back, on the back table, is a little sponsorship table. There's some literature on uh, advertising opportunities uh, at the mall. So if you're interested about learning more about uh, marketing opportunities through Briarwood Mall or have some questions, uh, Denise's card is there. Feel free to take her card in, in the packet. So we're very appreciative of Briar, uh, Briarwood Mall being our platinum sponsor. We also have a gold sponsor, and that's Washtenaw Community College. They have a, uh, a workforce development program uh, for a lot of people like people that are in this room that want to uh, expand what they do in their horizons and, and do it in an easy format. Uh, their programs cater to people like us who uh, maybe have weird schedules and families and things like that and other obligations and other full-time jobs and want to want to learn more about the great programs. Again, there's more literature on the back table there about uh, Washington Community College and, and again, we're very thankful to have them as sponsors. We also have a monthly sponsor each month. Uh, and if you are interested, or if your company's interested in becoming a monthly sponsor, please see myself or Derek, and we'll tell you all the details about it. This month's sponsor is, is, is Ingenix Digital Marketing, which is Derek's company. Um, you want to say a few things about it, or you want to wait to the end? And I'll talk about let's it. Let's do it now. Yeah. Why not? Shoot, we are the sponsor. So I encourage you to be a sponsor. You get a nice billboard in the newsletters, which you all read and click on. And uh, then you get to talk like I am right now. But Ingenix, we are a lead generation company, so we help businesses that want to grow, that need more qualified leads. Um, we drive traffic through organic, through paid, through social, and we help them bring qualified leads, convert them, and grow their business. Uh, it works very well. We are right in downtown Ann Arbor, above Arbor Brewing Company, and we have nice people who work there. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Derek, and thanks to Genex Digital Marketing. Again, it's a great opportunity for your company to get some exposure. <coughs> So if you're interested uh, in a monthly sponsorship or even a, a larger sponsorship, we'd love to talk to you about it. So, so we're very thankful. I'm gonna turn it back over to Derek so that he can kind of wrap up and introduce the speaker and, uh, and thanks again for being here. All right.
Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. So we always present. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, one more thing. On your table are these little cards. If you, if you like your presentation today, or as a reminder, please take one of these cards and you can give it to a colleague or a friend and invite them back to the next LA We have great speakers every week, and, and you'll see that after you hear Travis talk today. So please take one of these cards, use it as a reminder for yourself, or share it with a colleague. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So before I introduce the speaker, we're going to present the speaker with the t-shirt. Now these t-shirts, these, these are American-made originals, um, brought to you by Bank of Ann Arbor, because Bank of Ann Arbor helps. They have a nice LA Twin logo. So Travis, we always do the traditional photo of the t-shirt presentation. All right, very good. You know my uh, wardrobe at the office is yeah. all startup shirts. So. Perfect, that's kind of a startup. Uh, LA Twin is a startup. Um, so anyways, Travis, who I just met, who I'm really excited to meet because you know his picture was intriguing, he's kind of licking his fingers, eating ribs or something, I don't know, he's doing something. But what a cool guy, and Travis has a great startup called Food Junkie. And we like startups. They are in Detroit. Um, he lives in Detroit, walks to work, and uh, he knows Dan Gilbert, which is exciting. We like Dan Gilbert. But uh, Travis is going to talk about social media is a net, net, net negative. I'm not sure what it means, but I'm sure it's going to be brilliant. So let's give Travis Johnson a big round of applause and welcome him. Thank you for the introduction, and thanks for everyone braving the weather to get here today. It is ugly out there. It took me an hour and a half to get to Detroit, so uh, thank you all for coming. Um, as he said, I am the co-founder of Food Junkie. Um, that's the reason why my Twitter handle is The Food Junkie. Um, I do love food. I always have. Um, and when I started Food Junkie, I did it because of my love of food and also my love of technology. So that's most background you about me, and I'll get into this speak. Um, anyone have any thoughts of what the top 10 Twitter accounts are by followers? Obama. Anyone? Obama. Obama, okay. All right, well, Katy Perry, well, but, and this is about maybe two months old, so maybe it's changed a little bit. Um, but one thing you notice here is, is that it's all like celebs, right? Of all of the top 10, there's only two brands, right? And what are they? They're media brands, and they happen to be kind of ideally situated in social to get to where they are today, right? Um, but we're not really here to talk about, you know, how many followers Katy Perry has, because she doesn't have to spend any money for that, right? What about brands? What do you think the most loved brands are? Anyone name anything? Any most influential? Yeah. Apple. Apple. Google. Great yeah. ones. So here, Twitter, Facebook, <coughs> first two, social media, right? So this is most loved by dimensions. Apple's up there, YouTube's up there, and Samsung. So the only two, only really one of the top ten is Apple, as you mentioned, right? Um, and I threw in Samsung just for the people that aren't Apple people, right? Um, out of the, how many people here actually have an Apple product? All right, now keep your hands up if you follow them or have you notice them on social media whatsoever? All right, so a couple people, not very many. Well, it'll be interesting to find out that Apple doesn't even have an active Twitter account, doesn't even have an active Instagram account. They own these accounts. They've owned them for a long time, and they recently launched Facebook. So Steve Jobs is adamant about controlling Apple's message, and they didn't, he didn't want the message out there being controlled by the customers and the consumers. So his thought was, stay away from it. Well, since he's passed, uh, they have added Facebook. They've hired people for both Twitter and Instagram, but they haven't launched yet. So you'll see zero posts, zero people following. You'll see zero tweets, zero, follow, zero people following. They do have 30,000 followers and 23,000 followers, so probably mostly media waiting for them to actually tweet and show a picture of something at some point. Now here's what's really interesting. <laughs> the most hated brands by social media mentions, right? So we wouldn't have thought this, right? And what's really interesting, okay, so Apple has dropped down a little bit, so they're not doing as bad, right? They were, I think, sixth on the most loved, right? And Samsung, though, they were the 20th or thereabouts, and they're now the 41st hated. Well, Apple actually has 6.6 .6 times more hate mentions than positive mentions in social media across the board. Meanwhile, Samsung only has 3.7 more. Well, why is that? 
Well, it's pretty easy. Samsung actually has active social media accounts. So what is it that they're doing out there? They're out there controlling the message. They're out there influencing the message. I mean, think Comcast, right? If you ever tweeted at Comcast, my cable's out again. The very first thing that they do is get on there, switch it over to Comcast uh, service or one of their other Twitter handles so that you're out of the main Twitter sphere, and they start communicating with you that way. And that's all to reduce the negative mentions so that the positive mentions can filter through to the end consumer. So what I'm really getting at here is that social media is a consumer game that media companies and Fortune 500 companies and general brands try to break into, right? Now, is it to say that you shouldn't do it? If you're a major brand, it's about influencing that message to a positive spin. So taking whatever negative things are out there, trying to push them away and trying to highlight on the positives. But that's not what it is for the smaller brands. So if you're a startup or you're a small company, you know, you're, you're not the 500 million, but you know, you're the 10, 12, 30 million dollar business, you can do social media and you can get your message out there. But it's still a lot of work. It ends up being, the topic of discussion is a net negative, right? So the money that you're putting into social media doesn't necessarily generate a positive return for the money you're spending in, in the essence that you're getting you know, new purchases of your product. What you're really doing is, is that you're getting your brand messaging out there, and you're controlling the media, and you're also being having a face to your company because consumers look to Twitter, they look to Facebook to see if you're a legitimate company. All right, so you've gotta manage social media, and you gotta be out there. How many active social media accounts do you think there are? Active ones. C. C, anyone else? C. Boom, C it is. There's 209 active social media accounts out there. My advice on that is to claim your turf. Online, it's just like real estate. It's space, space, space. It's location, location, location. It's your name. So grab your name. You know, when dot-coms came out and the domains, the internet came out, there was a whole bunch of companies that didn't go, oh, I don't know anything about that internet thing. I'm not going to claim my name. Someone else does, and then they have to go and purchase it. All these social media accounts have a 209, you can actually go and claim your names for free. It just takes a little bit of time to get that done. So I highly recommend doing that. I mean, if it, has anyone in this room heard of Yo? Yo. 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 Yeah. Boom, we've heard a few Yoers, right? Okay, so you can actually claim your namespace in Yo. I've done that for about 25 grams. And I did that right off in the beginning, and now brands are starting to claim that. And they're trying to turn Yo into a marketing powerhouse. Will it happen? Don't know. I, I can't forecast the future, but it didn't cost anything to grab those Yo accounts, right? All right, so this isn't going to play. There's an audio for this, but it goes, nah, 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 right? So it's, it's, it's the viral fallacy is people tend to think that I'm going to make a viral video and it's going to go out there and it's going to sweep the world. Viral videos are great if it's a cat, right? It's not great for brands. Very, very few brands have actually truly gone viral. And the ones that you can, the ones that people name, like the Dollar Shave Club, that was a tremendous amount of work, a tremendous amount of psychology, and a tremendous amount of money to get that to go the way it did. And even so, you're talking about millions of views, you're not talking about tens of millions of views, right? So virality isn't necessarily a myth, but I think a lot of people think it's going to be the end game and I'm going to build this thing and it's going to go viral. Virality is really measured in percentage points. So if you can get a virality of like 1.1 or 1.3, that's amazing. So for every additional customer you add, you add 1.3 additional customers. That would be amazing. True virality and something that goes out there is going to be two times. So for every additional view, you get two or more additional views. So that's when you get that true exponential curve, 
And that's when you truly, truly get virality. But in brands, it doesn't really happen. So I caution anyone you know, trying to spend a lot of time and energy to build a viral video or to build a viral campaign. Now that isn't to say that within your own brand, you can't build a mechanism of virality into your marketing. Uber has done a great job of that. So you download, you install Uber, you do your first ride, you suggest someone else install and use Uber, they're gonna pay you dollars to do that. Again, it's paying dollars to do that. So it's not true virality, but it does some of the marketing for you. So you don't have to go out there and find that person. That person that you found is an ideal customer who's using your service is identifying additional customers for you. All right, so followers is, is really a vanity metric that a lot of people you kind of have to pay attention to in the beginning. So if you're a brand and you've got 30 followers, I mean, I, I met this one person that was in social media and wanted to you know, pump up Food Junkies social media campaigns. What did I do? I checked out Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and in all of them, she had less than 100 on each one. So it's like, that's where the followers is a vanity metric, but it's an important one because consumers are going to look at that and they're gonna say, this is a legitimate company or a non-legitimate company just by the number of followers you have. You get them over a thousand, now you're talking about you know, having that vanity metric solid. Getting over that, getting the tens, hundreds, and millions of followers is not necessary for most brands. And on that, don't buy followers. That's really important, especially if you want to have an active social media that is that is at all successful, buying followers really hurts your brand. Well, I'll give you an example of that. Within Facebook, how Facebook's metrics essentially work is, is, is that, and they're getting, it's getting worse and worse in Facebook, but you post something in Facebook, it's gonna go out to a very small percentage of your follower base. From that, well, how many people share it, how many like it, it then starts to grow. But the problem is, if you go out and buy 10,000 followers, so you've got 99,500 and some odd followers that are in India, that really small post is going to go to only people in India. And none of them are going to engage your post. So your post is going to die. And that's basically across the board for all the social media. They all have different ways and metrics of working it, but having purchased followers that are not engaged with your brand or with your posts, or your tweets, or your photos, is not gonna be beneficial to you because you're not gonna be able to get your brand messaging out there. That isn't to say that you don't spend on marketing. Specifically with the Facebooks, the Twitters um, of the world, they are media companies and they are advertisement companies. If you wanna get your positive message out there and you do wanna use social media as a marketing play to get additional users, you're going to have to actually spend money marketing it. Facebook, I mean, you can boost pages. Um, Twitter, you can do you know, specific tweets that you mention and so forth and pay for them to get out there to a wider audience. And with Twitter specifically, it, is, it doesn't help you to go and spend a bunch of money if you don't have any follower base. So the first thing that you do in Twitter is you actually purchase followers. But you don't do that through these shell agencies that throw a whole bunch of clicks in from India and so forth. It's actually through Twitter. You actually set your demographics, you set your locations, your geolocations where you want to find your users and add them that way. That's an official way and you can actually find engaging users that way. And the cost can be relatively inexpensive. If you're spending it more than a dollar, you're doing something wrong. So you need to change, you need to test, you need to iterate. Um, we tend to spend anywhere from 15 cents to 30 cents per additional follower in, in Twitter. Facebook's about 20% more than that. And then, when you are, if you are a startup with your brand and you're not on social media, one of the things that you need to do is you need to be active before you have that follower base. Because no one wants to follow an empty shell. I mean, you don't have any posts, you don't have any engaging content you're not gonna be able to get any followers. So don't spend any money trying to add followers um, unless you already have content. So start putting content up. 
The major brands post content every single day, multiple times a day. Um, smaller brands, you know, you try to get something out there minimum every week to start building that before you get that follower base. And then you can start adding followers, you can start adding posts. Talk about what matters to your audience. Not just your users, but your audience. And you, then you can tailor that to your product at some point. And I mean, this goes without saying, you need to become the expert in your field. Whatever that field is, if you're going to be in social media, uh, I'm not suggesting that people make angle iron need to be in social media, right? But if your brand does succumb to social media and your user base, you want to become that expert in that field. So your blog posts are on point, your tweets are on point, and they influence your blogs. Um, and a blog is a great place to start having one concise area for content. People aren't going to directly visit your blog, but you can post about your blog posts within Twitter and Facebook, and they can actually read them within Facebook and some of the other social media engines. And then develop a persona. So I'm the food junkie. I love food. I'm out there eating. I'm out there taking photos of my food. Um, develop that persona of who it is that uh, you want to be. You don't have to necessarily be the business-oriented person. You can be a different persona online. And then be patient. It takes a long time to actually build an engaged social media follower. And it goes without saying, but do this when it makes sense for your business. Because you're going to be doing a lot of energy and not going to see necessarily a positive return out of it. But in the long run, you'll have controlled your message, you'll have your mechanism set up to control the message when it does turn south. Because as companies get larger, what gets posted about businesses is the negative mentions, not the positive mentions. I've never posted, I love Comcast. I have posted, my internet's out again, thanks Comcast. So I already told said this, but I'm reinforcing it, do not buy followers, it's extremely important. It just does not work, and it is crazy hard to try to clean a social media section up that has got purchased followers. And this also goes without saying, but when you've got people tweeting at your brand, actually respond to them. It's extremely important, because now you've got engagement, and then engagement is going to help you, and it's gonna help get your brand messaging out. And you can engage, don't ignore the people that aren't necessarily your customers. Also engage the people that aren't gonna be your customers, because they have friends in their networks that could potentially be your customer. And then this is important, and I, I notice this all the time now, that since I put this in this presentation, and it's, it's, it's a hard one to do, but you need to be active when your user base is active. So when those tweets, when those posts about your business are happening, be active then. I've seen it so many times that I posted something on a Saturday, I don't get a follow up till a Monday. You know, Monday morning, Monday afternoon. So it's, that becomes very clinical. And that's not what consumers want, and that's not what builds an engaging brand. So just be real and be in real time. It's okay to take some chances in social media, and in marketing and spend money on social media, it's extremely easy because you know you can spend 50 bucks, 100 bucks, just to start testing something before you throw a couple thousand dollars at it. So you want to define your KPIs. Those are key performance indicators. So in the whole mass marketing scene, the whole mass marketing scene, a lot of people define your KPIs as you know clicks or engagement or how many users you've added, all of those things. I like to define it more in business matters. So, you know, how many people have actually visited your site, or how many people have actually clicked through your site, or how many people have actually made purchases and actually generated revenue. We need to define your KPIs, whatever they may be, so that you can actually track your results. Because, I mean, you can have awesome results, but that will mean nothing if you have no idea why you got those results. It's almost better to have negative results than see why than have positive results and not know why. All right, so I, 
built this presentation where I actually had to give some tools. And I'm not gonna list a whole bunch of them. I had absolutely no connection to Sprout Social. They've taken a lot of my money. But we've, in, we've invested a lot of time and energy looking at a lot of different ones, and Sprout Social is the best one for us. One of the things I like best about it is, is that you can put into a queue all of your messaging. One, you can time it, but two, you can put into a queue. And then it actually tweets or posts on Facebook or Instagram when your customers are active. So if your customers happen to be active at one in the morning, this engine's automatically doing it for you. So you load it up with a bunch of uh, you know, content, and then it'll start spitting it out at the most promptu time for your content. That's it in a nutshell, and that's my information. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Who's got a question? We'll come over to the mic. Everyone's eating? No? Um, I recently heard from a colleague that Facebook has changed their metrics so that, like you were saying, that it goes to only a small amount of people that already like you. Um, do you have a way to combat that without paying for anything, or is that just kind of the way of the world now? I, it's pretty much the way of the world now. I mean, if you can build an extremely engaging you know, piece, it can get out there without spending any money. I mean, we've had some posts that have hit 10,000 without spending any money whatsoever. It does happen. But what they've done is, over and over and over again, they've reduced the amount of percentage of how many people your post is going to go to in the initial set. And if that initial set, if it's going to, you have no idea who it's going to go to, is not engaging, you're, is not going to get out there. Versus, you know, having it go to 10% or 30% of your followers, then you have a lot higher chance of it. For well, one, it's already going to get to 30% of you know 10,000 people, um, or however many followers you have. And then the chance of engagement goes much higher, and those shares go much higher. So it's really a hard game. And Facebook's done that over the past couple of years in order just to start ramping up the revenue. I think the whole Facebook model itself is has plateaued. I mean, I hate to say this, but you know my. You know, my, my mother and my father are now getting into Facebook. So it's, it's gotten to the point where the, it's, it's not as sexy as it used to be to the college kids and to the core 20 and 30 somethings. It's now grown out of that. I'm going to expand on that for a second because uh, in GenX, my company has, say, around 3,000 Facebook followers. But every post we put there gets around 10 people who see it. Uh, recently we posted a job and it got shared by four or five people and it seems like sh if somebody shares it, yeah. that's the best way, right? Yeah, sharing is definitely the best way because what it's done now... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, one, two. <coughs> <coughs> what it's done is it's taken that... You've got a thousand followers, it goes off to five people and now two or three of those share it. So it's almost doubled the amount of initial people it's gotten to. So now that that engine can go by those likes, it starts to grow. And it can grow exponentially. Um, if you boost it, all it's doing then is it's saying that initial metric of I'm only gonna go to 1% or a partial percent. Instead, now I'm gonna go to 30%, right? And if I boost it more, it's gonna go to 50%. Or if I boost it more, it's gonna go to 100% of my followers. So now it has a much higher chance of getting outside of my follower network and thus bringing in additional followers and additional users. Yes. So I've noticed with brands that there are many that are all interested in getting followers and then do what I think is the most heinous thing, they don't follow them back. Exactly. So I just would like you to comment on that. I mean, I have my own point of view, which is, what are you thinking? But <laughs> I'll know what you think. Okay, so um, in the beginning of a brand, can't follow everyone that follows them because of the vanity metric. People look at it and they say that I've got, I'm following 100,000 people and I've got 10,000 followers. They're saying, well, they're just trying to get followers, right? So if you've got a one or one to one ratio, you know, 10,000 followers and you're following 10,000 people, it also doesn't look good. The, the, the metric, it's vanity metric that people are looking at is they're looking for something that, you know, it's two to one, three to one, four to one. So, you know, if I've got 100 followers, I've got 
um, you know, I'm only following 20 people, 30 people, or if I've got 10,000 followers, I'm only following, you know, three, 4,000 people. So that's the reason why brands don't immediately follow other, you know, other users. They're gonna follow users that have a very large subset of users that can help them. So if you're a brand and someone follows you, some follows Food Junkie, and you've got you know 550 people, and you're not something that's going to be ideal to getting our messaging out there, from the brand's perspective, following can hurt. But if you're a blogger and you've got 30,000 followers, yeah, you know it's someone that you're going to follow back. I had a question to follow up on the Facebook engagement yeah. question. So if you can get many people engaged with a post, does it build momentum yeah. as you continue posting? No. So each individual post is on its own. But when you got a good post out there and you add additional followers and additional likes, that'll help your next post because that percentage doesn't change. But that percentage of a larger follower base is going to help you. Travis, if you could you just kind of expand a little bit more about your mom and dad being on Facebook. Because okay. as an older generation, as we start to use the social media, I can see that the kind of paradigm shift of the social media becoming more advertised driven because I think the older crowd is going to be more receptive to seeing and reacting to business or ads than they would be on Twitter, where maybe it's more conversational. I, I think I think you're probably hit it right there in the nail, is that older generation and subset of my generation as well is very used to having commercials. You take a look at the, the tweens and the college kids now, um, they're very used to you know, getting media how they want it, the way they want it, without having any commercial or anything in between. Um, I'm very used to still spending over $100 a month for cable so I can watch all these commercials, right? Um, versus a lot of people have completely unplugged from Comcast and you know, they're getting everything from YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, and all the other ones. So I think you're probably hit a good point there is, is that the older generation is more used to having those commercials and seeing it on Facebook is not alienating them because it's something they're used to versus users now that grew up with Facebook never saw an ad on Facebook, saw an ad on Facebook, got very alienated from the model and has now jumped over to Instagram. It doesn't really have any ads yet. It does, but they're extremely limited. And that's gonna grow and will that then alienate that user base? I don't know. That's a good point. Uh, Travis, could you give an example of something that uh, Food Junkie did that was either a successful tactic or a successful post, like some example from your social media that might be of interest? Okay, so this is a little less social media, but it is marketing. Our, our most successful email campaign, our two most successful email campaigns, one was on a really snowy day like this, where very few people actually made it into the office. So we got on board right away in the morning and we made a GIF that was snow falling um, in Detroit and we posted out there congratulations or something along those effects for making it to the office. You owe yourself lunch. So that was one of our most engaged emails and then that had the most click-throughs. Uh, another one was when our system blew up. So you went to foodjunkie.com, you got error 404 and we screwed up. And uh, it was that way for our height of our ordering period, which is actually, most people think it's before noon, it's actually in the afternoon because most of our orders come in in advance. So um, right after we got that, the system back online and it was offline for a number of hours, we sent out an email that had a picture of a CCTV camera looking into a sign. Like the logo of the company was here and the CCTV camera was here and uh, we had the caption of, you know, it was like broke or, or something along those lines. Um, and, you know, so, you know, sorry to our user base, we were down, uh, we, we'll try our best, right? Um, and that was actually our number one best. So just posting stuff that is, that's gonna catch the consumer's eye or catch your customer's eye or your follower's eye, 
um, and get engagement. And that's usually not sale or buy here, right? It's going to be something witty, something fun. And so those, both those examples were custom things that you made that were time relevant and uh, creative, right? Yep. The real time aspect. Exactly. Okay. All those key points. All right. Who else has a question? Anybody? Get off the hook here. Yeah. Let's let's give Travis a big round of applause. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Um, great. So now we will do. When we turn the mic into the, to yep. the middle state. So uh, yeah, that's not going on. Yeah, these microphones are awkward. But um, anyway, so now we get to do introductions. And we're actually, we're, we're a little early, which is great. I mean, it's not a bad thing to be early because it is a snow day and it'll give you time to get out of here. But now you get to uh, tell us who you are and what you do. And then you can pass the microphone to your friend. And we will get all the way around the room by one o'clock, I believe. You want to start us off? Sure. All right, we'll start up here. What's that? We should be last? Can't be a good laugh. Are you? I'm the chairman. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Mitch Rohr. I work for uh, two different companies, one named PetCast here in Ypsilanti, Michigan, and another one called Ripsy that's in San Francisco, and I do social media for both of them. Sweet. That's it all. Hello everybody, my name is Courtney Peters, I'm with UTech, we're an office technology company here in Ann Arbor. Uh, we have fax machines, copiers, printers, and we do IT services. Hi, I'm Deborah Rackwich, I'm with Nunaway, Washtenaw County. Anybody heard of me, Nunaway? <laughs> yeah. Good, okay. A um, couple things, uh, we have a volunteer center, it's volunteerwashtenaw.org, so if you're interested in doing any volunteering uh, for the nonprofit communities, it's not only health and human services, but it's also arts and environmental and anybody. Or if you're working for a nonprofit or are engaged with a nonprofit, encourage them to please go in and list their volunteer opportunities so that they can get assistance. And the other thing we have coming up is Radiothon. Uh, we're working with Cumulus Radio Stations, W4 Country, 1071, WTKA, and WLBY to raise our, it's our last financial push, we push to, to meet our goal. And there are opportunities for um, companies to be engaged with us uh, and get on their radio station. So if, uh, you have, if you're interested in that, give us a call, give me a call. I'm Deb. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle Munster Heim, and I'm a writer. Um, I'm just starting out as a copywriter of copy and content, um, I think primarily for small businesses. And to get my samples and testimonials up, I'm offering introductory rates. So Can you guys please stand up? I forgot to mention yeah. that. You do that we can't see you. Thank you very much. So I'd love to talk with you if you're interested. I'm Dr. Rob Bohr. Uh, I'm a clinical doctor, but I'm also an entrepreneur. I, uh, my expertise is in manufacturing. I help startups scale as their uh, scale production, that is, as their products uh, gain traction with sales. So um, I'm most interested in uh, introductions to VCs who uh, want their investments to be successful. Hi, I'm Ann Hansen. My company is Brands, where I consult uh, with marketing and uh, product services. I will also be speaking here on uh, March 11th uh, next month, or two months, uh, on the influence of color. I am on the steering committee for the Color Marketing Group, and we just selected the colors that will be of key influence in 2016. So I'll go through 2015, 2016, and even preview influences for 2017. Please join me there. Hi, I'm Kathy Roger. I just retired from the University of Michigan um, at the law school. I was a develop development officer for almost 20 years. Um, I'm also <clears throat> learning a lot about social media. My brother has an independent bookstore in Williston, North Dakota, and <clears throat> it's been extremely busy. He has had no social media at all, and I'd like him to, to um, I'd like to help him get a, a presence in that area. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Ryan. Kasten, I work for Gene Codes here in Ann Arbor. We sell software to really smart people who work with science. Uh, and one of my roles there is to manage our media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, 
LinkedIn, so on so forth. So I'm really here just to learn more about uh, goings on and uh, where I need to improve. Hi, I'm uh, Drew Marco. Um, currently working on some personal projects while seeking full time employment in the digital marketing. So uh, if you guys know anybody, just let me know. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, I'm Ann Marin Kelly. I'm the Marketing Operations Manager at Ingenix Digital Marketing, and we do new generation. Hi, my name is Blake Valenga. I'm currently a junior at the University of Michigan, enrolled in the School of Information, and this semester I'm interning at Ingenix, so I'm helping them out with some digital marketing stuff. Hi, I'm Lee Bowie, and I'm a content professor at Ingenix. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham, and I help out with the marketing and promotions at Dexter Builders. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Musial. I am a uh, web and mobile development consultant, and I work with uh, individuals and companies and entrepreneurs to help them with their digital strategy, everything from uh, business plans to venture dollars. So uh, our main focus lately has been on uh, web mobility. So if you have a site that needs some help with mobility, I'd love to talk to you about it. Thanks. My name is uh, Jeremy from Ann Arbor Amateur Hockey. Um, currently, we have some we have some openings in our winter sessions for hockey. Also, we're looking for uh, silent auction items <coughs> coming up in March as a little fundraising opportunity, and as well as uh, potential sponsors for a big tournament that's coming up in March as well. Hi, my name is Kendra Theriot. I work with the Innovo Group, a strategic innovation consulting company, and. I come to these meetings thinking I'm going to meet someone who's going to help me figure out how to do better um, LinkedIn uh, campaigns. And it never usually comes up, so I'm going to put the question out next time to see if anybody can direct me to some LinkedIn resources. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aaron Harbour. I'm a solopreneur and video producer. I translate technology concepts into motion graphics. So if you need somebody with help messaging and uh, video, talk to me. Hi, I'm Dolores Brower, I'm the uh, marketing director over at Knocked Law, we live in downtown Ann Arbor. We're a labor and employment law firm. Hi, I'm Roger Rail. I'm a venture catalyst, so I help uh, a lot of networking groups and uh, entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, next Thursday, next Thursday, right, Kurt, uh, is Annual Collaboration for Entrepreneurship. We're about 800 to 1,000 entrepreneurs, investors, and service providers get together at Burton Manor in Livonia, uh, ace-event.org. Uh, it's pretty much the whole day, or whole afternoon and evening. Uh, and I think it's still $25 if you sign up soon, and you get more than $25 for the food. And then all the networking and presentations and everything like that is free. <laughs> um, so that's one thing I'll help with again this year. Uh, the other thing that uh, Carter and I both go to, and Aaron too, is uh, uh, Ann Arbor Video Interest Group, because video is a really important part of marketing now and getting your message out, so we invite people to come and if they need uh, video services, to check out the website, that's a2vig.org, and we're always making changes and enhancements to it, which is what our whole meeting was about earlier this month, right? All right, so uh, I'm Roger Rail again, thanks. Roger. Hi everyone, I'm Claire Stewart. Um, I have a background in corporate communications and social media with a Fortune 50, and I'm currently a marketing campaign manager at ProQuest here in Ann Arbor. Hi, I'm Christine Pampa. I also work at ProQuest in marketing communications and uh, part time. I'm also an adjunct faculty member at Oklahoma Community College. I teach an intro to marketing class online. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Hi, I'm Mary Lou, uh, for now with LA2M. Um, if you um, would like to recommend a speaker for our group, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. We're still in the process of booking speakers for our uh, winter, spring season. So um, if you have ideas, I'd be, I'll be here and you can uh, share those with me. Hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Carter Sherline, Frog Studios. I'm a commercial editorial and portrait photographer. 
which covers almost everything, you know, photography, a little bit of videography, from, uh, except for when it's uh, from executive portraits, which would be applicable here. I did some for Nash Law, waiting for some, some people to look at their proofs, uh, um, to uh, small products, up to trucks, uh, one of our regular members tricks out 18 wheelers for exhibitions and photograph those. I'm known for shooting running and golf, though. I guess that's a little sexier. If, you, if you're a runner, you've probably seen, <laughs> seen me with, with a camera in front of my face, um, shooting for Michigan Runner and RunMichigan.com. Uh, the, the images I shoot of these meetings go up on the group's Facebook page, and I'll try and get these out the next day or so. Great. So a uh, good job, everyone. Those were very informative and intelligent introductions. Thank you. We tend to attract an intelligent crowd of LA too, I'm not sure why. But, um, yeah, so I'm Derek, CEO of Ingenix Digital Marketing, uh, world-renowned LinkedIn expert. <laughs> so I'm, I'm saying that Travis knows a lot about LinkedIn too. What specifically do you want to know about LinkedIn? I've got about 3,000 people on LinkedIn right now. Um, and you first need to build your network just like you need to do with, with any other ones. Um, you need to make sure that you completed your profiles. That's an obvious one. Um, you can get yelled at for trying to connect with too many people, right? So you're supposed to know everyone you connect to. But what I find is, is that you can, if you are in a group that is reflective of your profile, one great one is alumni network. I don't think I've ever had an alumnus you know, turn me down. And they see that I went to the University of Colorado Boulder, they went to the University of Colorado Boulder, and I've requested a connection. I don't think I've ever had anyone not connect with me in that situation, right? Um, so, but there's other things as well. So, you know, whatever your field you're in, if that's what you're in, you know, you're automotive and so forth, and connecting and other people in automotive or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so build that network up, but make sure that your, your profile is reflective of that. Um, there's some vanity metrics that is nice to have also in LinkedIn, and that's your, your skills. Right, so you get that big box of people that have, you know, think that you've got these skills and these different items, right? Um, you can move those around so you can adjust, right? I have seen one person that had 99 plus for every single skill that they had, and that just wasn't the 10 on the deal, it was also another 20 below. And he was actually aggressive coming after me. He was at like 94 or something on the one and 99 plus on the rest of them. He's like, Travis, can you click here? You know, I mean, I'm trying to beat my friend in 99 plus. So I was like, sure, click there. Um, but yeah, so just make sure your profile is filled. Make sure you've got a good photo up there. Um, and then post content, try to post content weekly. Um, sometimes I lax on that, but try to post content weekly. And then you can also use it to author content. So if you've got a blog, um, where you've done a series of blogs, you can repost that and offer them. You just have to cite where they're originally posted. Um, and then that stays live within. So like people can see a list of your posts, so to speak. It's like, acts like another blog. So do all of those things. Um, and you know, I don't, I can't, with LinkedIn, it's not costing me a penny. I don't ever spend money on LinkedIn whatsoever. It's got me a number of advantages. I mean, foodjunkie.com, I didn't have foodjunkie.com, I had foodjunkie.co. I found the person that owned it through LinkedIn. So that's a great resource to find those things with those connections with those people. But you just gotta make sure you build out your network. And then connect with people that have large networks. If anyone here wants to connect with my network, um, I'll make connections to anyone that I connected with as well. So I have absolutely no problem doing that. Um, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. You know, build that network, do that by going to groups that are reflected within your profile, um, you'll get a very high connection rate for that. And um, then as you do posts in there, you'll start showing up in emails, you'll start showing up in these random things, and your, your, your LinkedIn connections will start going up, because you'll start getting a lot of inbound requests as well. 
See, I'm glad you brought that up. And it's actually uh, LinkedIn. We can probably do LinkedIn as a topic coming up. You know, I feel like I feel like LinkedIn was talked about for so often and that hasn't been talked about lately. And I think it's changed a lot in the last couple of years. So, but uh, thank you, Travis, for that overview. Um, so, 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 so next week, next week, we're kind of on a startup kick lately. Like we had Nutshell last week. We have Food Junkie this week. Next week we have Stratos, which is cool. They they changed their name. But these are the guys that make that uh, one credit card that holds all your credit cards. It's kind of like that one card to rule them all type thing. And Henry Ballon, who's spoken here before, Henry's a friend of L.A. to him. It's called your marketing agency pitch from the client perspective. So very interesting. So as an agency, how do you pitch yourself? What are clients looking for? I think a uh, very interesting talk, and I think we'll get a smart crowd next week, and hopefully we won't get a big snowstorm. Yep. But um, I don't know, this rock, man. I'm excited about Food Junkie, and let's give Travis another one more on the call. We have used Food Junkie for our board meetings. Okay. All right. Yeah. So utilize that. All right. Yeah. Oh, is that who we use? That's who yeah, we use. Right there, Travis. Oh, this, oh, yeah. Jim said he had a buddy. Okay. Really? Well, I want to use food really? junkie. I want to use food junkie. Doesn't this guy just make you want to use food junkie? Right. We should all use food junkie. I've got a couple coupons if anyone wants $10 yeah. off. If they want to yeah, see? look at that. Look at that. Okay. So, anyways, we uh, go out and uh, make some money, help others, and do good things. Stay dry. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for being here. Adios. Showing up. You always feel like that.